Yo, Chuck. What the Chuck is up, YouTube? In this video, we're going to be going over leak code 209, minimum size subarray sum. So you can see we're given a target sum of some value, in this case, 7. And we need to find the minimum subarray that would suffice when added together will be greater than or equal to 7. So in this case, 4 and 3 would be a subarray that would be valid, and they have a length of 2. Therefore, you would return 2. In this case, our target sum is 4, and just one element of 4 would be an appropriate subarray, and that obviously would be length 1. So that's the problem statement. I'm going to show you how to solve this problem with the sliding window technique. So without further ado, let's hop into the code. All right, so you can see I've got the function here. I just copy and pasted it from leak code. So how does the sliding window technique work? The sliding window technique works by just adding individual elements in your numbers array as you go across and iterate through it. So we're just gonna keep track of a sum. So I'm gonna make a sum variable and set it equal to zero. A window grows and compresses. That's where the sliding window idea gets its name. So initially, our window is going to be equal to 2. Then as we iterate through the numbers array, it's going to be equal to 5. Then we're going to add that 1, and it's going to be equal to 6. Then we're going to add this 2, and it's going to be equal to 8. Now our window is at 8, which satisfies our target of 7, because 8 is greater than or equal to 7. So now we have a valid subarray. So we need to keep track of this subarray. We're going to do that with a variable called min, which I'm initially going to set to infinity. Min will keep track of the smallest subarray we've come across in length every time we iterate and change our window. So here's our window right now. You can see it's these four elements. We want to test, hey, if we chop off the front part, if we chop off that two, do we still satisfy the condition of target? So if I, if I just have three, one, and two now, do those numbers, are they greater than or equal to seven? No, they're not because three plus one plus two is six. So this is our current window and it is not meeting the target. So we need to actually expand our window again so I'm expanding it to these four numbers now. Now I have three plus one plus two plus four, which equals eight. So this actually works, right? Or I guess this would, <laughs> three plus one is four, plus two is six, plus four again is 10. So yeah, this would actually work, but um, we're gonna do the same thing again. So we're gonna say, hey, what if we chop off this three in the front? Would that be valid? So I'm gonna chop off the three, this is our window now, and it's equal to seven. Yes, that is valid. This is still valid, and we have a now a smaller length subarray, so we can update our min variable to say three. That is the smallest subarray we've come across. So the way that we're kind of compressing our um, sliding window as we chop off the front value to see if we can get an even smaller subarray, we're using an index, so I'm gonna make a variable called left. Initially, it's gonna be set to zero, but left is going to represent that starting index. Every time we chop off a value in the front, so if I go back to this first subarray and we said, hey, this is valid, but it's length four, let's try and chop the two off in the front to make our window slide and compress. So now our, our window is gonna look like this, I need to actually increment that left uh, pointer because I need to uh, adjust for my new window size. So that is the purpose of the left variable. Now as we iterate through this data, obviously four and three is going to be the smallest length subarray because four plus three is seven, that's length two. So our min va value, uh, our variable needs to reflect two when we're all said and done. So let's go through the array of numbers. Let's loop through it. Make a variable i, set it less than array.length, or nums.length, I should say. Every time we're gonna iterate i. Okay, just standard stuff. 
So to grow our window, like I was saying, we need to add it to a sum. So I'm gonna say sum plus or equals nums at i. This is going to be adding every individual element to our sum as we iterate through the loop. This is the same thing as saying sum equals itself plus nums at i. So let's just console.log sum as we make it grow through each iteration of the for loop. So if I do that, you can see our sum value is growing. Again, we really don't care that our sum value is growing unless it satisfies the target condition, which is going to be on, it looks like index three. Is that index three? Yeah, because we have two plus three is five, plus one is six, plus two is eight. That's index three. So here, this is where we need to basically update our minimum and then also see, hey, if we decrease this array, will it still satisfy the target? So what I'm gonna do is make another while loop inside of our for loop here. So I'll say while sum is greater than or equal to the target, I need to update this min variable. So you can say if i minus left plus one is less than min, we are going to update min to i minus left plus one. So why am I doing this? What does this mean? I minus left plus one, what this logic is saying, it's going to give us the length of the subarray. Recall that left is initially set to zero. So for this first subarray of length four, we need to subtract I minus left. So I recall is three and left is zero. 3 minus 0 is 3, but the length of our subarray is actually 4. That's why we add a 1 right here, because remember, left is 0 based. Just like arrays are 0 based, they start at index 0, so that's why we're adding this 1. Okay, That's to give us the accurate representation of the length of the subarray. If this value is smaller than what the min variable currently is, we're going to update min. Okay, all right, with that said, there's actually a much cleaner way to do this. You'll see people do min equals math dot min, and they'll pass in our two arguments. They're gonna pass in the min value, and they're gonna pass in the i minus left plus one. So these are actually saying the same thing. This is just a cleaner way of saying it. You're comparing these two values. The min value is going to be returned as the value of min. Okay. So we're doing that, we are updating our min, and then now we need to, um, because we're, we're getting rid of, we wanna get rid of this two when we have that subarray, right? We wanna chop off the front. So we actually need to decrement our sum for nums at left. Remember that left pointer is just keeping track of the start of our sliding window, and I is keeping track of the end, okay? So because we chopped off this two, we now need to reflect that with our left pointer being updated. So I'm gonna say left plus plus, okay? So you can see we are just updating our min, we're taking out from the sum, and then we're updating that pointer again. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Let's return our min value now. And if I do that, we get two, excellent. So I believe in the problem, it says to return a zero if there's no subarray that meets the target condition. So the way we're gonna do that is we can use a little trick here. Um, I'm gonna say while min, return min doesn't equal infinity. And then if it doesn't equal infinity, then I know that we've changed the value of min, so I'm just going to return min. But if it does equal infinity, I'm gonna use the colon here, and then I'm going to return zero. So basically this is saying, hey, if min doesn't equal infinity, we know it's been changed, so I want to return the value of whatever min is. 
However, if min does equal infinity, then this condition is triggered and we return zero, okay? So now if I run this code, it should do the same thing, and it does. Let's run this in leak code. We'll see if it works. Submit this guy. And it looks good, and it's going pretty fast. So yes, that is the sliding window technique. Just remember the window is moving across the array of numbers and we are compressing it and expanding it appropriately. So the runtime here is time complexity of O of N because although we have another loop inside, we are still just iterating over this loop one time. So this is O of N time complexity. It's pretty good. This is about the fastest uh, algorithm I think you could do to solve this problem. There might be some faster ones out there, but this is a pretty good solution. So if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you in the next one.